One of the easiest trilogies I've done. It started out as a crazy kidnapping love story, then you think it's gonna get all soap opera-like with an evil twin, but about 80% of it is just music video montages and sex scenes. It was very easy to take notes on, which was nice because doing the sequels was an obligation. <laughs> because I did an episode on the first. So enjoy while the cats provide the love scene sound effects. cooped up in here for a while. Everyone else stuck at home seems to be getting into this whole streaming thing, so maybe I should give that a shot. I mean, I may not have reviewed that Tiger King documentary, but I did review the exploitation movie tie-in. And how could I forget about this crazy movie? Let me go direct to the source and see what's trending. Hmm, this 365 Days movie. Surely this is intended for a smart audience who can count all the way up to 365. And it's a Polish film. Hoo -hoo. A foreign film to pique my cinema snob curiosity. And I know that Netflix trends will not steer me wrong. At the same time, this is trending at number two. Classics like The Nut Job and Baby Mama are also trending. Both masterpieces in their own genres, obviously. 365 Days is the story of boy meets girl, girl falls in love with boy. That is, if the boy is a rapey, murderous crime boss named Massimo, who kidnaps sales executive Laura and forces her to fall in love with him in 365 days. Well, I'm sure this handles this taboo subject delicately. Uh, nope, I've made a horrible mistake because of course I did. On the bright side, the movie is perfect for those craving unintentionally creepy-ass love stories like Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, did you think something like Until September was just an 80s thing? Oh no, because every generation needs their own boxing Elena or swept away. Or maybe this movie reached the top two trends for a couple of weeks because people are isolated and horny and will masturbate to about anything right now. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Wait until you discover E.T. pornos. And let's be honest, even the opening logo says, Ugh, next film. But viewer beware, the movie is rated TVMA for language, sexuality, window reflection, and, oh no, smoking! It's the perfect warning for those scared away by aliens being troublesome. The movie must be xenomorphic. Finally, warnings made for those of us who get outraged by oxygen being offensive to dead people. This one seems to start out okay. All great love stories begin in an isolated area in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, complete with a Sicilian crime family talking about selling things, some of which are only 12 years old. I hope he's talking about bottles of wine. I see why Netflix distributed this. Filthy Rich was such a big hit, they insisted on all of their movies being like the Jeffrey Epstein documentary. What's this? Another girl outside? Hey, if you me. <laughs> sure, you're a sex trafficker and all, but don't be weird. This is Massimo's dad, and his final words are very final wordsy. E tutto questo. Whew. Thanks, God. This is like if you combine Fifty Shades of Grey with a comic book origin story. Christian Grey was the worst Green Hornet, which isn't helped at all by the whiny ass soundtrack. You keep telling me I'm free to go. 
Next film. It's years later, switching up the go-to five years earlier card. Now Massimo is in charge of the businessy business business sex crime business, and tensions are hot. My question is, how the fuck did it happen? Couldn't pick a tone there, huh? I hope they're all coming together to fire the soundtrack. Every time you wanna walk the door. Well, the movie is already committing an assault on my ears. Maybe if we give it the whiniest soundtrack imaginable, the characters will seem less whiny. And if that doesn't work, we'll send you a sexy private message. This is Laura interrupting her boyfriend, who is watching action movie establishing shot footage. Martin is making her day way more lousy, much like Massimo's bad day. Someone has stolen their container of cocaine, as if these guys could ever run out of cocaine. You know what this scene needs? Masturbation cutaways. More music by the lame-ass emo girl who butchers popular music from movie trailers. How am I supposed to react to this? It wants me to be turned on by the masturbation scene, yet splices it in with Massimo forcing the flight attendant to go down on him. My dick is more confused than it usually is. Also, this is the most I can show of this. Netflix has straight-up porn now. Must be the smoking it was referring to. Anyway, let's have drinks because it's Laura's birthday. I hope she also got a happy birthday message from Willie Garson. Oh, and I think the stripper has arrived. Are you lost, baby girl? Pfft, typical rom-com meet-cute. So cheesy. Martin and Laura continue proving who should play me and my wife in our biographies. Martin's gotta leave, though, because if he leaves, she'll get kidnapped much sooner. But he's left her with good company. I'd cry, too, if he left me with this damn soundtrack. Hmm, a dark alley seems like the best place to work out my shit. Was it? And then he took her home safely. Or not, she wakes up locked in a mansion. Just another typical night in Hollywood. Massimo is a murderer with powers like a slasher movie villain. Are you lost, baby girl? You are really wanting that kind of pickup line to take off, aren't you? <laughs> Stop it! This is like I'm watching a Telemundo remake of Overboard, more so than the actual Overboard remake. When are they gonna get to the shenanigans with the bratty kids? After drinks, of course. I think, I think you should have a drink. I'd advise against that. He explains that he knew he needed to kidnap her the second he saw her at the airport and when she was outside when his dad was killed. Well, when you explain it like that, it all makes sense now. The reason he's kidnapped her is because he wants to give her 365 days to fall madly in love with him. Ew! Also, pussy, Mickey Rourke only needed nine and a half weeks. You can't have me just like that, kidnap me and think that I am all yours. But that's why I'm giving you a chance to fall in love with me. This feels like what a random Twitter review thinks Beauty and the Beast is. He does give her evidence that her boyfriend is cheating on her. Oh, well, with that, I'd love to stay in your house. It would be one thing if this was supposed to be a thriller, but it's shot like it's supposed to be freaking hot. Like if you're the person who watches Hunchback of Notre Dame and roots for Frollo. And of course, Massimo has a bat cave, but he doesn't use it for superhero stuff, but to reenact classic torture scenes from his favorite exploitation films, like Flavia the Heretic. He finds out this man has been selling children to a brothel because Massimo has some morals. He's not the full Epstein. You know what this sexy torture and pedophilia needs? To immediately cut to a sexy naked bathtub pose. She almost escapes though. Hope she doesn't witness anything. Oh no, now she's gonna have to hide out in a convent. This is a world where even kidnapped people look like a smoking hot 10 when they wake up. 
Hmm, I think this movie is supposed to be trashy. Correct me if I'm wrong. How could she not fall in love with this guy? He's like romance novel The Devil's Double. Although he does continue to torture her with the soundtrack. The radio, the radio, the button. I'm starting to miss the Pure Flix country music soundtrack. It keeps getting worse every day. There's a full breakfast platter, but no ketchup! This scene is barely a minute long, but it immediately has to cut back to... Okay. Love me, love me, love me. This soundtrack is the worst movie character since Alan from Return to Sleepaway Camp. Hell, sometimes it cues the soundtrack in mid-conversation! I said I'm not going anywhere. Oh, don't worry, it tags along with them for the car ride! At least it finally uses the music for a clothes-changing montage, which is not nearly as fabulous as the one from Oy Vey, My Son is Gay. Though this one is more rapey! I've ordered it. And I'm gonna decide when I'm gonna see it. He's talking about her underoos. She does briefly escape and makes her way right to the police who don't care. Are you lost, baby girl? You're just sticking with those lines, huh? He does, however, promise that he's not going to touch her without her permission. I mean, he's not a monster. He saves the full rape for the flight attendants and the soundtrack. You made a monster. There's more bad lyrics here than there is dialogue. They better finish their meal before they donate the rest of the food to the other Netflix movie, The Platform. And please tell me this guy starts singing Bella Note from Lady and the Tramp. If he does, I will forgive the soundtrack. Ooh, hot. He explains to her his businessy business business. He's very good at acquiring money and business. Darling, why haven't you eaten your cherry licorice candles? <laughs> Back to the romance. I'd like you to teach me how to be gentle. He's a mobster who wants to begin killing with kindness. You. Well, you already have the music collection of an overly sensitive lame ass, so that's a start. Sally Stockholm is starting to trust him, so she tells her mom that everything's fine. I mean, at first she was outraged, but that was before this amazing dinner feast. And he flex sleeps too. That's better than waking up to the smell of bacon. Not to mention a good old romp in the shower. Do you want to touch it? Your CD player? Yes. Where is the stop button? I'm just now noticing that I think this shot is in every erotic thriller. As for the next shot... <laughs> well, that's just par for the course with this movie. Oh, did I say I'd only touch you with your permission? By that, I mean I'll tie you up on the plane and stick my hand in your pants. Sure, she's kidnapped and raped on the plane, but look at the beautiful scenery and the free ice cream. There's a good side to everything. Are you talking about me? Mm, gossip. That's where she draws the line. But here's the movie's biggest mistake. I'm bored. Never put the line, I'm bored, in your movie, especially when it's a bad one. I'm wondering if it's too late to jump into a pool of lava like the current number one Netflix trend suggests. There's nothing surprising about this movie. Ooh, a giant painting of him next to a lion. Shocking. The most unrealistic thing about the movie is that he doesn't have a tiny dick. This is as good a time as any to take a break. <laughs> Why, yes, I am on my 12th shower since starting this movie, complete with a lot of tears. <laughs> hottest specials, the most outrageous comedy. We've got it all for you on Cinemax. Oh, are you sure you want to know what you just missed? He put leg shackles on her that widen the more that she moves. And he makes her watch as another woman gives him a blowjob. Oh, <laughs> jealous. God, enough of this sex. Where is all the smoking I was promised? I don't need this romance shit. Dress up. We need to be in one of my clubs in two hours. <laughs> Slow down the pillow talk, stud. 
Time to go clubbing, I guess. I think the theme tonight is what a shock, lousy soundtrack, and bad flirting. That's plastic, you idiot. Massimo gets pissed at her for wearing the wrong dress. He's gonna let her have it. You'll be mine. I guarantee it. Then I'll do anything I want. All right, cause you don't already. This dude makes Christian Grey look like Tom Hanks. They should be celebrating. They found their cocaine. Plus, John Wick has arrived to shoot all of them in the head. It's about time. Okay, maybe that wasn't John Wick, but there are some guns drawn. Guess we'll have to leave it to our imagination how that ended. Massimo is advised to get rid of the girl because the nightclub conflict has caused a war between the families, which is definitely her fault. I wouldn't have to do it if you didn't dress like a whore and put on your little show. I think he's gonna need longer than 365 days, but luckily it's a leap year. I swear I am sometimes a psychic when it comes to these movies. Because it actually is turning into overboard. Oh, but he's such a hero for saving her and all. I'm so grateful that you're alive. But in the same time, I want to kill you. <laughs> you want multiple personality disorder. And then they bang. <laughs> no, seriously. They bang hard. But I'm not going to show you any of it. Not because of the content, but because I want to spare you the soundtrack. So I guess they're together now. Can't wait for the third act breakup caused by him clubbing her in the knee or the endless clothes changing montages. This movie treats its montages like chips. It popped one and now it can't stop. Oy vey, this movie sucks. They got another party to go to, which is Netflix saying, it's either this masquerade ball or the one from the Lovebirds. And that movie's ad-libbing is about as off the rails as this movie's soundtrack, Pick Your Poison. But the dancing in this movie is much better. This movie is unfortunately making me look back fondly on the brief Lombada movie phase. This is so much like Fifty Shades, he even has his own Kim Basinger, his first true love who taught him everything about kidnap sex. It's okay, he assures Laura that she's the only one for him because he's been stalking her for years. Your portraits have been hanging in my house for years. Oh, well, that makes me feel better. I trust you. And of course, they bang in the bathroom. <laughs> Seriously. Usually, this is the part when I would play you the sound of the people having sex, but instead, I'll just play you some of the soundtrack. I'm gonna light like fire. 365 days of boner killing. She actually is jealous of his ex, Anna. This is also the look on my face when I saw that this movie still has 30 minutes left. How does it have this much running time? Cause I know you won't be. Because the movie puts Rocky IV to shame with all the montages. She's then let go, and not really given a reason, and she sort of tells her friend what happened. But she paints it as a romantic summer lovin' situation you'd sing about in Greece. On the plus side, here's the smoking I was promised. My god, this is too far. I am shutting off this movie now. The movie, however, is doing the opposite of shutting it off. It is literally turning on the soundtrack. Even her friends are terrible people. I don't need to see a spa montage. The Stepfather 3 has more of a reason to be an hour and 50 minutes long. Not this wealth porn. Although it did spare us the two and a half hour runtime of the previous wealth porn I watched. Oh, thank God, another club scene. It's been minutes since the previous club scene. Girls night out. It does get awkward though when Martin comes back. Get out of here, you cheating bastard. I want to go back to my true love, the guy who kidnapped and raped me. Martin is definitely overstaying his welcome. But it's rather clear that she wants you to leave. I have to say it so you understand. Mm, thanks for saving me, Massimo. I see you've broken into my room and are sitting in the dark. That's normal. And guess what he brought with him besides a hard-on? How could you close I am running out of things to say about this music. 
She tells him she doesn't need the 365 days anymore because she loves him now. Great, so we can end the movie? When it cuts to black and cued more soundtrack, I actually did think the movie was over, but nope, 18 minutes left because we have to jump right into a sequel-style plot where the two of them are now engaged, and he is forcibly dragged through yet another clothes-changing montage. The movie even pauses to give us a cameo from the book's author, Blanca Lipinska, because of course it's based on a book! Plus, this is where he meets Laura's parents. So, what are your intentions with our daughter? Don't answer that. If you think that this is going to lead to any conversation with the parents, it doesn't. How much do I not care about this movie? I just noticed her hair is different, and I think it's been like this for the past 20 minutes. She brings her bestie in to be her maid of honor, who instantly lectures her on getting married far too soon. <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest problem with this scenario. Oh, and she's pregnant too. That kid is gonna be born part Sicilian, part another goddamn clothes-changing montage. Uh -huh, you're the most beautiful mail-order bride I've ever seen. Unfortunately, it's a shotgun wedding in more ways than one. They're racing to give the movie an On Her Majesty's Secret Service ending, only if there was not a single heartbreaking thing about it in the slightest. It doesn't show her getting killed. That's important to the plot. Why would it even think about showing that? Uh, maybe there's hope. Maybe she's on that boat instead. I don't know, and I don't care. I guess you could check out the other books in the series if this movie's sequel bait ending really left you with blue balls. Goodbye, you lousy lay of a movie. I should have taken the warning seriously. I'm gonna etch Double Toasted was right on my tombstone. God, if Old Fashioned were made for the good angel, this one is made for the bad angel, and neither of them know that they're both the bad angel. This movie is all kinds of horrific, but I can't say I was shocked by it. I was way more shocked by Until September, mainly because, at least in this case, I knew what I was getting into, and it played out like expected. It's trash novel rape fantasies for bored housewives. It has no intention of making its plot a serious stalker thriller. It's up front about being pure garbage. Reviewing it is like reviewing a full trash can and complaining about the flies and the smell. Oh, but with that, I will complain about the flies because they're obnoxious and swarming around this movie because it's pure dog shit. But if it's trash that you want, it gives you more literal bang for your buck than a Fifty Shades movie and its goddamn contract negotiations. So enjoy your hybrid of an unintentionally disturbing crime romance with the Bravo Network. That's it. This movie was the last straw. I have been in this closet for 365 days myself. And before I end up getting Stockholm Syndrome and start enjoying these movies, I need to escape this prison the only way that I know how. Quick montage. <laughs> It really is a quick trip when you travel by car footage. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so comfortable. It feels so good to be back in my chair in a... Huh? Oh, God damn it! I forgot my jacket! Well, I'll be damned. Well, I guess I gotta watch the sequel to 365 Days, only because I watched the first movie. Do I remember liking the first one? No. Do I remember what happened in it? Not really. Okay, let me jog the memory bank. The first one came out in 2020 and was about Massimo, who comes from a crime family. Then he gets obsessed with a woman named Laura, who he then kidnaps and says, I can make you fall in love with me in 365 days. Then that Stockholm Syndrome kicks in, and she does. One thing leads to another, and the rival crime family tries killing her in a tunnel. The end. 
The second one, like the first, is a Polish movie from the same directors and still based on the book series by Blanka Lipinska, who also co-wrote the script. As for the plot of the second movie, I don't know, they probably bang a lot. Oh, you can really see my enthusiasm for this shit. Let's get this over with so I can get back to better movies like Carnosaur 2. With this movie, I'm even annoyed by the opening logo. Don't make that sound like you just had a bright idea. Hell, with these edits in the opening, it looks like the movie itself is almost nodding off and then shaking itself back awake. I guess Laura is fine after the accident, and now she and Massimo are getting married. I haven't been this happy for a marriage since the Honeymoon Killers. All you need to know right away about this is montages. You think Rocky IV had a lot of montages? You ain't seen anything yet! The movie is like someone made the single worst music video playlist and is forcing you to watch it. Also, this is bad luck. You're not supposed to see the bride before the ceremony. It brings bad luck to see the bride before the wedding, not to say to bank! See? Her friend who catches them having sex agrees. It goes against their tradition of kidnapping and marrying and bad dubbing. If you want next time, you can join us. Mmm, the dubbing in this sucks worse than the characters. Though I didn't think she'd be the one lighting up a cigarette after what I just saw. Such a gorgeous wedding, like I'm watching a Godfather movie. Only one so bad I'm jealous of the decapitated horse. I'm just kidding. Surely this'll be one of those sequels that fixes all the problems of the first. Er, well, maybe not. Who cares? More songs! Let me tell you a story. Please don't. I love it when they just throw in a dubbed line of dialogue as if the top priority isn't the soundtrack. Let's run away from all this mess. Am I yeah, let's go to the guest house at our mansion. This sexual chemistry is electric. You have one hour. Oh, what? The romance is out of batteries already? Mm-hmm, kinky. She ties his hands down so he doesn't kidnap the maid. Never mind, and then they bang. This is also in the genre of and then they bathe, where yet another song kicks in. My god, look at how long the soundtrack listing is itself. This is longer than the script. It's longer than any movie I've reviewed on Musical March in September. There was way better chemistry in Grease too. thank you very much. How do I look like? Like the first time, baby. It will be a perfect honeymoon, husband. Do they even know each other's names? You can later let you see. <laughs> names? What names? Here's another song! There are times when I wonder if it's a parody of itself. There's a part in the montage where he knocks golf balls into her like it's South Park. Apparently she likes it. Then it moves on before finding out if he even made par. I guess this is just what this universe is, as their friends are ruining their dessert by banging on it. I sort of like the lead guy, Michelle Maroney, though, because he goes through this with a let's get this shit over with delivery. Ladies, I would like to propose you to catch up in a different location, because Dominica and I needs to focus on work. You didn't bang on our breakfast, did you? Anyway, guess we should go do lunch somewhere else, since our fluids are all over the toast at home. She's already bored in the marriage because Massimo is too busy with work. Really? It's just been sex so far. Watch. Another sex scene. That was spectacular, but can we please play another CD? Do you have any Andrea True connection or something? When we come back, I hope they spend the rest of the movie just silently reading. <laughs> are back and not only do they not spend the rest of the movie reading, this house is so full of sex, everyone's doing it in every room. What does the book of this feel like? Is it just a collection of lyrics from the soundtrack choices written in red wine and tears? I just want to replace the songs with classic commercial jingles to make it more entertaining. So kiss a little longer, 
stay close a little longer. Perfect, I found a gimmick. Careful, ladies, there may be a volcano going off in the background. Massimo is gonna shoot molten rocks inside of you. Ooh, now it's hot. It gets to where the soundtrack just comes in for a few seconds for no reason and then goes away. As long as we can feel free. Huh, well, that was weird. Back to dinner. This way it'll be less awkward when Massimo shows up. I said, we're living. Oh, what? You're surprised he's a dick? I mean, I'll give it this. The cinematography is pretty good. Doesn't distract from the dialogue, though. You cannot control people, and I won't let you control me. Oh, really? Since when? That's what the whole story is. That and montages, where she's now into the sexy gardener named Nacho. Hoo hoo, too bad her friends already had sex on the melted cheese and sour cream. Let me guess, this guy is probably really nice, but she's still gonna end up with the asshole. See, he treats that drink with respect. I sense a food montage. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby. Ah, uh, see, here's why I'm not into the movie. I'm not watching it at Christmas. The Hallmark Christmas movies really don't work as well out of season. Can't wait to see the Christmas gift. Congrats. You're the owner of your own clothing company. Mm, even Krampus can get into the holiday spirit, unlike this prick. Open it. You can trust me. Open if you're brave enough. Again with the spring snakes. Oh, they're engaged now. I'm too lazy to know their names, so I'll also call them husband and wife. And for the love of God, can you stop flashing Santa's reindeer? They don't like it. Is anything gonna actually happen in this? I think I've seen this before. The characters even think this movie is pointless and redundant. That's why we've got the commercial jingles. Mommy, wow! I'm a big kid now. After another sex scene, I guess there's some plot. He has a brother. You have brother? And you didn't tell me about this before. <sighs> no matter, she and Olga check out the clothing store. I only know her name is Olga now because they say it in the scene. Then clothes changing montage. Just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. The next one I can get behind though. Because I know that music. Even publicly, this couple is peak. They hate each other's guts. It's enough for me. I want to go back. Can't you see that I'm in the middle of a conversation? Liar. There's no conversations in this. If the characters actually communicated with one another, the movie would be over with in 20 minutes. But after she talks with Jennifer Saunders and Richard Benjamin, they can get back to the movie Eyes Stapled Shut, already in progress. Not only do they fight in public, but he's just right up there, macking on some other girl, where it's shot like a horror movie when she catches him cheating on her. You bastard! Kidnapping I can tolerate, but cheating? This is the worst thing you've ever done. It's at this point she could definitely go for some nacho. This is a time for serious reflection. My god. How could I be so stupid than with her? <sighs> now let's make a sex tape and mail it to him. And for God's sake, make me some food that wasn't smeared all over my friend's fiance's hairy chest. Ooh, so thoughtful. Dinner is ready. Look what they made for you. Well, that's a waste. One person isn't gonna eat all of that. I wish I cared about these plot points like the characters do. My sister Amela will come by later. She's a bit moody. Pregnant hormones. Your sister is pregnant. Okay, seems like an overreaction. Oh, uh, wait. She was pregnant and then lost her kid in the crash. Okay, I, I believe I'm following. Now take me, fill me with golf balls, and make sure to say na 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 Massimo is in big trouble now. I have no idea where is she. What did you do to her? What did you do to my daughter? Where does he start? He might want to sit down. This is gonna take a while. Should we get to the part where we find out it wasn't him sleeping with that girl? Hell no, there's waves! And yet I'm still confused. 
That was weird. Is he banging his sister? I don't know why this movie is bothering with a love triangle when there's barely enough story to make a straight line. You know what? I take that back because wait till you see the twist. I mean, we still got montages to get through. Oh, need some more time filler? They just watch a movie at one point. We can watch the movie now. I hope it's Porky's Revenge. Now this montage pisses me off because I'm trying to figure out what they're watching. It's gotta be a better film than this. Anyway, as Lady Villain gets ready for her dance audition at the end of Flashdance, I'm sure they'll find Laura soon enough. Oh no, that guy. Forget about him, it's brunch. What's wrong? You upset because you can't stick your dick in the food? Even the erotic dreams aren't erotic. Make love with me. No thanks. Bring Freddy Krueger back. Phew, what a pointless dream sequence sex scene. She's safe here. She's got Nacho to protect her and murder the intruders who come through. You killed him. Unfortunately not. You will be fine. Oh, guess that's okay then. Anyway, that sure is water. He tells her more about the person who broke into his house. It's definitely his enemies. Every person in this movie has surely called up someone to say the phrase, Peter is down! Oh, and Nacho's dad is also a powerful gangster or something. <laughs> smile, sweetheart! Let me take you to a place where you can smile. I promise. Yes, let's work on that smile by playing a bummer sounding song and talking about cars. I think this car is so cool. It's cooler than your husband's spaceship, huh? Wait, are they talking about cars or dick sizes? Hot on their tail is Massimo. They may be going fast, but if they get into a car accident, they'll survive it and it'll be barely talked about. Cause they got the tiger in them. You're so a tiger. And poured on that cereal, beer. I can say that this one is um, different than I used to drink. Mm, yes, welcome to the world of Billy Beer. But relax, if you think the movie would stop at only a hundred montages. Hold my beer. They literally just said that. I think this movie is aware it's trash. It's just not doing anything funny or clever about it. Please, Lloyd, help me! Get me out of this before they cut to another song! Don't look at me! I got nothing! Season 3 of 911 Lone Star is over! Okay, thanks, Lloyd. And yep, that's still water, and that's still mountains. It's scenery the movie. Got anything else to add? Sure, why not take a few minutes out of the day to play Wordle? Also, bad news, boss. Your wife kissed Nacho! I know. They just sent me the sex tape and more random eating. So they have plans to visit Nacho's father, in which Massimo is also gonna meet with the dad. I'd say, what are the odds, but seriously, you don't know where this movie is going. Sure, this may look like knockoff brand House of Gucci, but you have no idea the amount of holes in this bag. Er, well, maybe not plot holes per se. It establishes anything can happen in this world, and they say it seriously, whatever it is. I am Marcelo Nacho Matos, son of Don Fernando Matos. I don't know what any of that means! I guess he had to bring her to this island for some kind of collateral because businessy business mafia business. How could he do this? I didn't make you come here. You came with me because you felt safe. Yes, that's the point, you bastard. You should have kidnapped me. Don't try wooing me with these sleek Mission Impossible 2 style shots of the car. We can now get down to businessy business. If this were a Skinamax movie, this guy would have been played by David Carradine. But again, I kinda like the lead actor, who says the line quietly, and then decides, no, needs more. You're wrong. You're wrong. Ooh, that's some daytime soap passion. I'm now rooting for Massimo in whatever this deal is to take over the business or something. And I'm back to not caring. 
and I mean it when I say this is a straight up soap opera. You want to know how much of one it is? You can probably already guess if you really think about it. Remember when he said he had a brother earlier? He does. The guy she thought was Massimo cheating on her was not in fact Massimo, but it was his evil twin brother, Adriano. I'm being serious, that actually happens. The twin brother was so unlucky because it was born 10 minutes later. How evil of a twin do you have to be for you to be the evil twin version of Massimo? So that he and Nacho have to save her, but do it slowly, take your time. Again, the actor is having fun. I'll give him that. You know, I'm happy to spend a little time with my new sister-in-law and have a little chat with her. There is enough stupid shit here that had they focused on more batshit plot turns like this and less on the 90 minutes worth of music and montages, it could have been funny bad instead of a total bore with a crazy last 10 minutes. When even then it still turns into a music video. She'll be fine. Her, probably not. As for the twin, if they make a third one, I'm sure he'll be back. Same with the music. Uh-oh! Spaghettios! I know there will be a third. They have to finish out the love triangle, of course. And it ends just like the first one. She looks dead, probably isn't, and then it ends. See you in the third movie, where I hope they mention this ending a little more. Or not. It's not like I'm gonna remember this by the time the third one comes out. How does a movie have so much plot, yet so very, very little? There's a lot of it that is just taken over by montages that it makes the Bikini Car Wash Company 2 look more layered. The first one even had more going on in it as a whole. Then in other aspects, the sequel has more turns than a Tyler Perry drama on Telemundo. And that's the key right there. The movie does know that it's trash, but I'd way rather watch something like Temptation or Acrimony, because they're much more entertaining. I can't exactly say I'm looking forward to the entirety of the next movie, but I'm looking forward to the last ten minutes of the third one. Great, now that I got that over with, I can get to the more important movie, Carnosaur 2! <laughs> it better have twins, bro! I'm the hot goddess. Oh good, mere months later we got the third and final chapter to the 365 Days Trilogy. On the one hand, you could have at least waited 365 days to release part three. On the other, I guess it works out. It means I haven't forgotten anything from the last one. Oh, do you need a refresher on part two? After being perfectly fine from the car crash ending of part one, Laura and Massimo get married. They're over the whole kidnapping thing from the first one, and they spend their time playing crotch golf. But oh shit, did she catch him cheating on her? Best run into the arms of Gardner slash mobster son Nacho for the love triangle. But Massimo didn't cheat on her after all. That was Massimo's twin brother Adriano. Then Laura gets shot. Again, I'm sure she's fine. There, now you're all caught up. With it being from the same writing and directing team as the other films, I'm guessing this one was shot back to back with part two, maybe? This thing was released so quickly that as of now, there's only three names on the IMDb cast list, and the top one just says Sexy Girl. Look, I can't lie though, I may sound angry, but after how crazy that second film got in the last act, I am curious what kind of madness is in store for the final film. Please don't let me down. I don't want just trash here. I want an orgy of horny flies surrounding it. It's gonna let me down. Unless the only thing you wanted out of this was the non-stop soundtrack. Maybe someday. <laughs> now we play 365 Days or Religious Movie. Ah, damn it, there's gonna be a lot more montages. What is this now? Is Laura dead? Is Massimo crying over her grave? That must be it. The families are at war. A 
unfortunate incident. Oh, excuse me. I should have said after this tragedy. The war has started after the first sarcastic shots fired. Yeah, okay, I still think Laura's fine. Even if she's dead, she's far away from these assholes. She has to be fine. The love triangle is still going on. Every love triangle is serious when they have a slowly removed sunglasses off. And Nacho is running late. He should have tended to about three gardens by this time of morning. Hoo hoo hoo, every hot ass thriller opens with a funeral. All right, I'm coming. See, he came and seems ecstatic about it. Whoa, whoa, that's not Laura's grave at all, huh? It's the grave of the twin brother? Seriously? You killed off the only interesting goddamn thing about the second one? This is gonna really suck. After being fined from the car crash in the first movie, of course she's now at home, asleep, and still perfectly fine. After being shot so hard it was in slow motion. Hey, hey, what's a bullet hole in this universe except for one more thing for Massimo to put his dick in? See, the wound was serious. You can kinda sorta see a scar. Times are still tough. There's still no hot sauce for the eggs. And her friend Olga still has nothing to do. This scene is spoken in Polish, except for the most important line. Oh, more, more, more alcohol. You don't need to remind the audience to get more alcohol. It's like reminding them to put on their pajama pants and get ice cream. Hell, listen to the start of the next song. I'm so fucking wasted. Did he just say, I'm so fucking wasted? It's like she interrupted their meeting of them just sitting there and staring at each other to say, you know, that's not the kind of padding we do. Clearly we need to have sex. Your meeting of just sitting there can wait. I don't know what this is about. If Laura can survive her gunshot wound, you should have been able to bring back the twin brother. So far, this is just about shopping, going to restaurants, and playing the soundtrack. Oh yeah, that's right. Much like the second one, the soundtrack listing is more extensive than the cast listing. In the second one, I got by with playing hilarious commercial jingles over the montages. So kiss a little longer, stay close a little longer. But here, I'm gonna go with classic TV theme songs. Where everybody knows your name. You know, it's an important conversation when they're playing music over her lines. Seriously, the only line you can hear her say is that she's having a food baby. And then Nacho calls to cover that baby in delicious melted cheese, I'm sure. The movie's just gonna be about the love triangle, isn't it? I should have known from the poster, which also seems to suggest it's Laura who's gonna have a twin in this one. She is determined to forget about Nacho. She's gonna sleep with someone named Popcorn instead. But first, dancing. It's Saturday Night Live! So far, we've seen eating, drinking, dancing, sex. This movie is just a collection of things you should be doing instead of watching 365 days. You're bound to find something with better chemistry than these two. Since when do you go out without me? Since your evil twin brother died, he was way more entertaining than you. You're just boring now. I love how they leave one room with a dancing montage just to go into a private room with another dancing montage and a private stripper. Daisies, snowflakes, bad girl. Laura's even tired of waiting for her to strip, so she just takes over. Ah, oh, damn it, I see you all the time. The scene goes on so long that when the song ends, another just starts playing. Welcome back. Leave it to 365 days to make an entire trilogy out of just simply being playlist porn. And when we come back, waking up and walking downstairs. If your boss is a jerk and you get home from work and you feel like a trouble a dyke, there's instant relief from this hardship and grief. Thank goodness for me. We're back, and she's waking up and walking down the stairs. She has to stop him from jumping in the fire, only because he confused himself with one of the burning pieces of wood. This is reaching to find drama. He is obsessed with finding out what happened between her and Nacho on the island. You'd like to know what happened? Your ex shot me. Yeah, she wins with your ex shot me. <laughs> you gotta get over Nacho, bro. 
but these movies use any excuse for someone to get angry and shatter a glass. Oh, right, I remember the glass shattering from the second one. Then he picked her up and moved her. Right, thanks for that reminder. Look, Massimo picks her up and moves her too. And he's gonna set the alarm. At 6 a.m., he'll throw another glass and scream. I'm just kidding, the music will wake her up, of course. Hello, world, hear the song that we're singing. It doesn't matter that he was having sex with her while she was imagining Nacho. They'd still be eating breakfast awkwardly regardless. There are no lines in this scene, or in the next, when another song starts. Excuse me, what are you doing here? Can't you see I'm playing tennis? Where else can we put an I Spy reference? Since the marriage is going bad, she's now going to focus on her career, clearly as a movie soundtrack editor. Anyway, I guess she's a successful fashion designer now. Also, Olga's a model, as we saw earlier. Massimo is still the same, though, doing business in rooms only lit by the sunset at magic hour. It's like they don't even know each other anymore. I hate to say it, but he should kidnap her again to spice up the marriage. He doesn't. He just goes to a strip club. <laughs> when will Crockett and Tubbs put an end to Massimo's criminal empire? It's almost hilarious that she can't escape any of this, as even when she goes back to work, her boss is just banging some random guy. They got good news, though. They're going to Portugal for a photo shoot. <coughs> hey, do you mind keeping it down? Lloyd is fast asleep while I'm watching the episode, due to your movie being so boring. I think I know why they're on this trip. <laughs> That's right, travel montage. Where we're moving on. Hey, it's been five minutes. Why are you not shit-faced and dancing while alone? God, it's like a movie that's also showing what the audience is doing while watching it. Isn't this movie supposed to have a love triangle? Where the hell is Nacho? That's a Nacho. Who the hell is that guy? Oh, he's no one. On with the plot, more flimsy than the clothes. Light up a cigarette, something sort of happens, there's Nacho, in the background, and keep the clapping at a minimum. You woke up Lloyd, and he's furious, and so am I. Nacho didn't even see them. So they go smoke and drink at another restaurant, where again, they're saying nothing because the music is playing over their dialogue. That probably is what they're saying. It must be nice to live in a world where a hangover is simply when you fall asleep on the couch and dream about another montage. How dare you use the Red Shoe Diaries theme? Way more happens in an episode of Red Shoe Diaries. At this point, I'll even take Hotline with Shannon Tweed. This movie is only a love triangle in the sense that she just dreams about Nacho a lot. After 10 minutes, their hangover has passed, so they're back at the club. Ladies, ladies, it's your 12th time here this week. I think you have a problem. I'm sure there's an important reason for them to be here. Hi, I'm Maria. We wrote to each other. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you can't just introduce a new character. I still don't even know what this movie's about. God forbid there's not another person to go dancing with. We are halfway through this film. Why does it exist? It should have been only five seconds long and just said, yeah, you know how she was shot at the end of the second? Well, she's fine. The end. As for what's going on right now? No! No, no, please, please. Thank you. This movie has clearly had enough. The way this scene is edited, it's like the main characters are interrupting the movie's main goal, fashion. And that dress, where is this from? Um, it's from my new collection. Hey, do you mind? I'm catwalking here. The camera's on me. Even when the characters leave, it stays on this shot for a while. And where is drunk Olga? Mrs. Olga, please stop. Victoria, listen. Security is so fired for letting these shenanigans run through the halls. I don't care if the movie is still pretty well shot. 
In case you forgot, though, this is Nacho's sister. The only reason I remember is I recently reviewed the second one, so I guess it's good this was only released a short time later, because in only one more month I would have forgotten. I should be annoyed about this random subplot of Olga trying to escape security to get back into the party, but it's the most anything has happened so far. It certainly isn't Laura and Nacho sitting in a car and saying nothing. They have to get out of the car to say something. Everything was so perfect until you showed up. Right? She was perfectly happy with her husband who kidnapped her till she fell in love with him. Eh, what the hell? What's the worst that could happen? I like that Nacho weirds her out so much that even the soundtrack just leaves. But we can fix it. Yeah, the soundtrack is stuck around for a lot, but Nacho, do you have to bring out the crazy eyes? It's okay, though. He has candles in his house. That means they're gonna have sex. After she takes a bath in a giant gravy bowl, then they go out and lay in the sand bed. Sorry, the sun is almost up. It took me hours to arrange this sand bed and also all the sand candles. And then they bang. I'm starting to think she and Massimo are not good for each other. Even if Nacho has taken the time to find the perfect love montage music. You, yeah. And don't let suddenly being filmed like a Tony Scott movie fool you. The movie is still really boring. I killed her. So you saved Massimo's life. I don't remember that part of the trilogy, but I don't care. Massimo is going to be very mad when she comes back. Look, he's sitting at his giant where-have-you-been desk. He just redecorated, too. He's been gifted a sweet bomb vase from Boris and Natasha. Things are getting bad here. She's contemplating a divorce, plus the cable's out, so she just has to sit quietly in her robe and... I return to Sicily. The plane is to your disposal. He left her a plane, and not the better one that she wanted. But perhaps Olga has figured out the best way to get back into the club. No one can resist her denim romper. Look at the bright side. Massimo's gone. That calls for a happy montage. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Hmm, I don't think I know that one. You know we're nearing the climax as the action is at full speed. She goes to visit her parents, and then they eat lunch and pick at their food for an eternity before any of them say anything. Then when they do, it's quickly interrupted by the soundtrack again. I like how I don't even need to tell you a song is playing right now. You can just tell by the way it's shot. Just like when the sun is being a pervy voyeur through the curtain, a love scene is happening. Anyway, she's having a dream sequence where she has a threesome with both Massimo and Nacho. We can't have that actually happen in the story, so make it a dream sequence. And when we come back, she and her dad ride motorcycles. TV land classics Nick, Nick, Nick at night All night, every night Nick at night we're back, and they're riding motorcycles on their way to enjoy small-town life. Green Acres is the place to be. There's only 20 minutes left. Something had better happen. And I don't mean she and her dad get lemonade, go sightseeing, and ride motorcycles some more. Or this, either. know you're in a passionate thriller when there's way more scenes of eating silently. Even the nuns are judging the shoddy storytelling here. But after walking for miles to find the perfect spot to stand where the shot will look pretty, she finds out Massimo knows about her and Nacho, and he will kill everyone. Why are the characters so sinister? When she arrives back in Sicily at the airport, Nacho is disguised as a driver. He's been waiting there for hours. I don't trust anyone in this universe. I'm sure she'll still give him five stars. He is a very good driver. And he's good in the sack. The background isn't impressed, though. It looks very dry. Now there's only ten minutes of the movie left, but please, take your time parking. The end of the second one had a shootout and an evil twin brother. This one has monotone talk of a possible divorce, her miscarriage, and more backstory. When I was a child, my dad used to read me a book. 
Yes, yes, it was hop on pop, we know. Can we get on with this? During his I'm not such a bad guy speech, I was actually waiting for someone to randomly shoot him from a distance, like it would end the same exact way as the beach ending from Caligula the Untold Story. But it doesn't. They just stare at each other awkwardly, and it goes on forever. Just camera circling, transition effects, soundtrack, and staring. Lots of staring. He asks her, are you back, baby girl? And we wait for her to answer whether she's leaving him or choosing Nacho. It's up to you, audience. Your guess is as good as mine, because that's the end of the movie. What? In a movie where nothing happens, did you really expect it to have an ending? Screw it, we don't either. It's a choose your own adventure now. Personally, I think she chose the soundtrack. It's the only character that's been with her since the beginning. Look, like I've already said, it is what it is. It's trash. I'm sure the audience knows it's trash. It's playlist porn, wealth porn, magic hour porn, mixed in with soap opera drama, and acting that is fine for the kind of movie it is. But it isn't good trash. There's not enough material here for three movies. The first one was probably the best because at least stuff happened in it. The second got crazy at the end, but that was it. This one? Why does it exist? Not even the sex scenes are anything special. There is no crotch golf sex here. And it doesn't even give you the common courtesy of an ending after sitting through all three of these. Seriously, you could have just edited all three movies into one two and a half hour film, and that would have been better. Because as it is, it doesn't feel like a trilogy. It feels like a six hour assembly cut that needs severe trimming. I have to give it some respect, though, for being a trilogy so low rated that by the time it got to the final chapter, only two critics reviewed it as of now. Clearly, I will stick with the Thunder Warrior trilogy, thank you very much, and stay tuned next week because that's when Musical March in September begins, though it's going to be very hard to top the amount of songs in the 365 Days trilogy. I think I have hangover. <laughs>